evening, evening, dude, let me bump up my volume a little bit, here we go, oh, right there, alright, cool, anyways, it's your big homie Snorlax, um, this is Whoop Times 2, not 3 on Wiseman, this time, uh, that's coming up soon, soonish, maybe, kind of, sort of, maybe, touch me. Like you do all the other girls. Anyways. <laughs> um, so this is called Tangentialism. Uh, originally this was just supposed to be a 5 to 10 minute video of me and my buddy Field Mouse talking about these new Sega controllers. Uh, and originally we also were supposed to talk about a video game. There are two video games made by the same company uh, about the same time that are both comic book properties and uh yeah that that talk didn't happen um we talk a little bit about the controllers but it pretty quickly veers way off into other subjects and it's about two hours long <laughs> so uh yeah so the name i came up with for this is tangentialism um uh, tangentialism isn't actually a word i don't think uh, but tangential is, and tangential is the best possible thing I think I can use to describe when me and him get, uh, get together and we talk, you know? It's a uh, very tangential. So this is called tangentialism. This is episode one of probably one, maybe we'll do another one eventually. But episode one, tangentialism. It's called I Like Pants. Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so... Back in the hot seat. Yeah, hot seat. It's all hot and sweaty. It's because you're in it. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's how we do it around here. That's how we do. That's how we do. If it ain't gay, is it worth doing? Touching dicks and licking tips. <laughs> I like how that rhymed. Yeah. Touching dicks and licking tips. Alright. So. VA do crimes. We both just got done playing with both of these. The uh, 8-Bitto M30. Right? And the not, not really special name. Just Sega Wireless Controller. Which is made by Retrobit. Uh... Pros and cons. What, what'd you, which which one did you like better? You've played with both of them. I liked the. Uh, I mean, they both felt the same, but I I liked the Sega controller just because it reminded me so much of the old Sega controller. Because I had it like does. the the wired six button controller. Yeah. And like I got really good with Mortal Kombat three playing that when I was a kid. And so did, that, did you ever try to play Mortal Kombat with a three button controller? I did. It was horrible. It was not fun. <laughs> That's how I learned. I've got Mortal Kombat 2. <laughs> <laughs> we can try that later. We can. <laughs> and we can turn off the uh, the uh, XYZ oh, yeah. buttons on both controllers. Those are always bastards because you had to uh, yeah. hold the left bumper down to, yeah. I think, if I remember correctly. The, um, so, pro, so. Oh, you had to hit A and B at the same time. Say what? You had to like yeah. hit A and B at the same time for to a make... high punch and B and C for a high kick. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a which is mess. not fun. Especially when you're trying to do combos. So, is it like even, uh, these, are, these are fairly well built controllers for being Sega controllers. I, I remember Sega controllers always feeling flimsy even though they were built like brick shit houses. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm I like, I'm happy with these because these actually feel kind of sturdy compared to original xbox or not xbox but uh sega controllers but um where the fuck was i going with that i don't fucking remember oh i don't even know sturdy controllers is. yeah sturdy controllers um <laughs> so pro so what did you or didn't you like about the m30 oh there wasn't really Anything that I didn't, I mean, it, it's really hard to say. Like, I wasn't paying that close of attention. Do you want to hold them? 
Sure. Uh, Six never say that to me. I know, right? Same. Like, it's definitely heavier. Um, I don't know. Did you ever play Might just be the shape of it that I like better because of this. Uh, not much. So, that, so... I don't know if you've ever seen a Saturn controller. Let me pull it up. But that's... I have, but it's been a long time. Like, I, my friend, uh, I want to say my friend Asher had a Saturn, but because he had about every system. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, so, he was that kid that, he, that always had all the cool stuff. So it's got more of a, that one's got more, the M30 has more yeah. of a Saturn shape. Yeah. So. And that might be all it is. It's just the, the little bean shape. Yeah. It's just one that I'm more comfortable with subconsciously because i haven't even really played sega in years yeah so but here's a mad cats controller that's kind of got that boomerang thing going on on the output but then it still has the bumpers i am insanely anti-mad cats i am <laughs> <laughs> it pisses Brittany off because mad cats now makes pretty much all of the rock band controllers oh god and really? i mean they work well enough but i'm still got that old like old school mentality of it yeah, like, it's gonna set their... our house on fire <laughs> yeah <laughs> like dude their controllers would only work for like an hour yeah. then they would break and me and uh, my friends would <laughs> joke so much shitty. about how mad cat controllers were just like viruses like hey, here's 20 bucks for a piece of plastic that's gonna just break yeah and yeah i'm i'm fairly anti mad cats Oh god, there's this horrible ass Mad Cats in, uh, controller. I think it was Mad Cats, but it was uh, it's an N64 controller. Uh, Mad Cats was the first company to convince me that sometimes it's better just to pay extra for the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sometimes the name brands are just better. <laughs> I, I grew up on a steady diet of Kmart, but like, yeah. There was this horrible ass controller that was on, that was for the N sixty four. I'm trying to see if I can find a picture of it. It uh, it was fucking horrible. Like it it had this just insanely heavy clear plastic. This is pretty close to it, but it did, like it would it just went straight across there. So it kind of looked like some weird sex toy. So it was like this one here, but without even the little. Nub. Yeah, there was like no nub at all. It just went straight across. Okay. And I'll put I'll post up pictures on the video so people can tell what the yeah. fuck I'm saying. I seem to remember the... actively not wanting to get any off-brand. Well, I probably had that one, the little green one there. Yeah. Um. But uh. Oh God. Because I had an N64 like when it? I graduated high school. I think this is it. Shark okay, bag. so it had little bumps, but yeah, dude, this is it. Interact. This thing fucking sucked. Wow. Like, so my main my uh, main controller broke when me and my sister got into a fight. We used him like and we started like whipping them at each other <laughs> and like fucking, like you do. <laughs> like uh, so I mean we eventually got over it and we bro we broke uh she broke her in sixty four controller and I broke mine so we needed one. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was all that she could afford. It has this slow option on it, which fucking sucks. It Why does you nothing. It well, because I sort of understood do all the fucking Mad Cats controllers and stuff that had the uh, uh, like turbo. Yeah, the turbo, which just made your buttons go fast. That, uh, the M30 has the turbo button on it. Yeah, which and is awesome. It helped occasionally. Yeah, like if you just want to spam the E Honda or like the Chun Li. Yeah. Shit. Or, or if you just really wanted. To test your strength and get that yeah <laughs> believe me i used it on some of that I, so but yeah this I is had a game genie i'm not above saying that i cheated a few times <laughs> i have a game genie for sega actually <laughs> <laughs> i just got it not too long ago um so yeah what what pros and cons of the sega the sega genesis wireless controller We'll say the Genesis wireless controller does feel lighter. Oh, yeah, it does. That's my camera. Shit, sorry. But, uh, uh, let me. No, oh, god damn it. I normally just do audio podcasts, so I don't know how to do it with this. Oh, uh, you're good. But uh, hey, that's my Kim Lab shirt. God damn it. If you haven't listened to Kim Lab, I don't know what you're doing with your life. 
are probably listening to ICP. It is a it is a juggalo oriented channel. Nothing wrong with ICP. I'm down with the great Malenko, especially that's that's a fucking Here fantastic go. album. Or as they say in the shockumentary, God damn, that's a good album. <laughs> So, there we go. There's there's my call out for the Juggalos and Juggalettes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure Rick will be happy about that. Like, oh. I have my moments. Is that that guy's name? The dude that elbow drops stuff? Which one? Is that Rick? No. Fucking Rick Comic City. Oh. My a, Rick. He's a secret yeah. Juggalo. He is a Juggalo. <laughs> he's got the ICP cardboard cut out in the bathroom. Which I still, like... Have you moved when, that yet? <laughs> not from the bathroom. But when we moved, like, he took it and he stuck it in the window of the old store. Yeah. And then, like, that was the last thing for us to get. So I went and I got it and I brought it over and I was like, tee hee, I got a plan. And I stuck it in his office where it was facing the door. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to scare the shit out of him when he opens up this door. And then at the end of the day, I had to, you know, close up and take the money out of the drawer and take it and put it in the safe. And I went and opened up his office door and scared the shit out of myself. I was like, goddamn, got my own ass. It did scare him later, but it's just so much funnier to explain that I scared myself with the damn ICP cutout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's just a collector's item now. It is. He could probably sell it for a good penny. Uh, Occasionally people ask him to buy it, but he just... Just no. I don't know what the fuck he wants for. <laughs> Why is it in our bathroom? No one knows. It's just the way Rick goes. That, yeah. Scary Didn't children. it scare a little kid? It did once. <laughs> And then uh, <laughs> Justin's daughter heard someone say that they were scared of clowns and decided she wanted to pretend like she was scared too, but that didn't last long. Yeah. Because she's not really scared of clowns. <laughs> Fuck. All right, so what else can I say? Did you notice any lag between them? No. Did you have, I mean, other than just basic analog, I guess, I get, I guess it, Sega is still technically digital. Well, like it's I all guess in, circuitry. in the Lost Vikings, there were some moments where, uh, whenever, because, you know, we had those little, like, fucking blue-haired roly-poly guys. Yeah. And uh, I had to, like, time it to shoot whenever they came up. Yeah. And sometimes the timing was really off, and I just attributed it to myself, though. Okay. And so, I, I didn't feel like the controller was cheating us, but okay. it could have been. Yeah, so, like... It just didn't occur to me that it was a wireless controller at the time. From a technical standpoint, this one is Bluetooth, and this the so the M the M30 is Bluetooth and runs on a Bluetooth signal, whereas this one runs on old school radio frequency, hmm. uh, runs on 2.4 gigahertz. So this one should have the less the lesser of the lag, uh, barring like any serious sort of interference. Which could also explain why in X Men, once we figured out how to do the high jump. Yeah, I was able to do it, and you still had trouble. Yeah, that's that's the only thing I could think of. Like, so I've tested this one, and I think I can do. I think I got it to where I can do like nineteen button presses really, really quick before it misses one. So, but it's still it's still just really weird about the jumping on that, which was, which I think uh, did I use both controllers on that one? I think we both. I think we both used. Yeah, I think we took turns playing with them. At first. On that one, I'm not sure if I tried to jump with which one I tried to jump with. I, well, I mean, I guess we tried to do it when it was two player. Mm -hmm. Once you figured that out. Yeah. <laughs> it took us a while to figure out that game. Yeah, it took us like 40 minutes to figure that out. So we played um, X Men, the original X Men on Sega Genesis. We played X Mutants. Which is pretty horrible. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't too good. So, uh, <laughs> so those both of those games were made by the same people. Same development team made both exact games. Both games are technically Marvel properties. I think at the uh, at the time, X Mutants was a Malibu property. So what what did uh, <laughs> that's uh, uh, yeah. So what was so horrible about X Mutants? There was, well, the, I think we both agreed that the uh, sound design was pretty awful. Like every time <laughs> the, the fucking sex, sounds. every time the girl got hit, and she goes, oh, and like, <laughs> it, 
<laughs> it kind of reminded me of, uh, like, a little thinking back on it anyway, makes me think of David S. Pumpkins. When they when they did that thing and he goes oh poppy, <laughs> but yeah like every time she got hit she made a sex noise and the dude his was wasn't that much better but it wasn't yeah it wasn't as sexy but it was just the he kind of sounded like he was a white guy trying to imitate Shaft maybe like yeah. I like that's what I thought of with it I was like uh, so just the other day me and John were talking about Final Fantasy seven. I forget the character's name, but it's Tifa's dude. The dude with the Gatling gun arm. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's his fucking name? It starts with a B. Um, Biff. Biff. His name's Biff. I will say the other thing I don't like about X-Mutants while you're looking that up is that no, they didn't have any sort of powers. Like, and They, they yeah. introduce you to like this whole lineup of characters, but then they only let you play two of them, and they both suck. <laughs> yeah. Like, when I saw that lineup, I was like, oh, it worked. I'm going to play Dylan because it makes me think of Predator. But. Aykroyd? Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. They made us play Aykroyd. But the, one oh, of the when, was when, Dylan. It, when it was talking about the story yeah. at the beginning? Yeah. Like, I read the comics the co- um, earlier this week, and it left a lot to be desired. I think the only <laughs> thing that sold anything of those comics, they did not sell. Um,. Very well. They they declined. I, I guess I've seen comic series decline a lot faster than that one did, actually. Malibu didn't do very well, from what I've been told. So And it was it was on other ones that, like, it seemed like uh, there was, like, two other comic labels that it was on that were just, like, those pop-up labels that kept happening in the 90s where everyone was just trying to cash in on whatever the fuck they could about comics. Yeah. And uh, so one company had it... Um, and then they went under. Another company took it over. It was another company that Ron Lim for, uh, worked at. And then that went under. And then Malibu got it. <laughs> so, because he was also doing stuff for Malibu at the time. You know, it was weird to me. Like, uh, one of my favorite comics, Hack Slash, started off as Devil's Due book. And then Image bought it. And now Tim Seeley, like, works for DC. <laughs> but occasionally gets to go to Image and work on Hack Slash. But, like. Yeah. I haven't ca- I haven't caught up on the new DC shit, um, money, right? But uh, um, so from what I hear, everything's kind of ass like backwards now that Jeff like isn't Jeff Johns working more with the film stuff at this point? He is. Um, he uh, just finished Doomsday Clock. And yeah. the downside is it took him so long to do Doomsday Clock. Yeah, like it was whole... only 12 issues and it took like two years. And because yeah. of that, like, it was supposed to line up with the Rebirth continuity. And it didn't because it took too long to come out. So they kind of had to scramble to fix that. <laughs> um, so, like, and he's got other projects coming out. I don't remember what they're called. Uh, I kind of stopped reading a lot of it because I don't like Tom King and I didn't like his Batman story. And, um, yeah. So... The, I'm getting all the uh, Hill House books and Lois Lane. I was getting Young Justice, but I kind of dropped it. I like yeah. I like what Brian Michael Bendis is doing on DC. Didn't he just make a DC Spider-Man character? Bendis? Um, yeah, he fucking... Oh, what is it? He didn't make that character, but yeah, they had one named like Silencer or something like that. I can't remember if it was Silencer or... What? It was one that just came up. Like, um, so they've got that phone or whatever, and, like, whenever they... Dial H. Yeah. And whenever they use it or whatever, they get new powers. Yeah. So one of them has spider powers now. Which gets... Those powers get taken from heroes, too. Okay, okay. Because, like, there's an old issue of The Flash in the New 52 where he's missing his powers, and he doesn't know why, and it's because whoever had (laughs) dialed, dialed up and got his powers. So, like, just for a short period, he's without powers, and he's like, what the fuck, guys, and... It'd be funny as shit if whoever's writing the Spider-Man thing took that into consideration. That would be funny. Yeah. Suddenly, Spider-Man has no powers for, like, an issue. <laughs> like, what the fuck's going on, man? That would be right. brilliant. So, his name his name is Barrett. Yeah. But me and John were talking the other day, Mr. Uh, Mr. J. Um, we were talking the other day about Barrett, and fi- we were talking about Final Fantasy VII, and we specifically were singling out Barrett. And his dot, like... Even though there's no voice acting in that game, 
his character feels so racist, like created in a racist way, because <laughs> it it seriously just looks like they just put some set some guys down, made them watch old black exploitation films, and was like this is how black people talk, <laughs> and then made them write out shit. <laughs> like <laughs> that's uh yeah. Have you ever seen Black Devil Doll? I have not. I'm gonna have to send you that. Oh God. Hey, is this like a black sort of a black exploitation film, or is this a uh, what is it? It's kind of a black exploitation film. It's uh, a ridiculous black exploitation parody of child's play, where uh, this guy dies and gets put inside of a puppet's body, and it's like the most stereotypical like black exploitation, like black puppet, and then he just ends up like fucking a bunch of girls, and it it is. <laughs> fucking ridiculous like oh god I'll give it a shot it can't be any worse than a Serbian film like... I mean it's it's not it's not bad like that but it is just ridiculous like so much goop, like like there's a whole almost 15 minute scene of all these like he tells like he gets this girlfriend <laughs> and uh convinces her to bring all of her friends over cause he needs some action and they, like, all these, like, sexy girls pull up in a car. And then they get out and just start washing the car. I just realized I had my headphones on. I don't need them on. Yeah. <laughs> like, just, my, my ears are burning, and I'm like, oh, god damn it, these headphones. They get out and just start washing the car for, like, ten minutes. Yeah. All the while, he, he's in the window jacking off. The like, black, as a puppet? Yeah, the Black Devil doll is. Does he still have, like... Bodily fluids as a puppet? He does, because he squirts them on the window. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Honestly, this doesn't sound much worse than Plastic. Did you read Plastic? I did read Plastic. I love that book. I do, too, but it, it doesn't sound like it would be much better than, like, a like a movie version of that. Well, it's like... just goofier. Like, Plastic has kind of that, uh, like... Lars and the real doll feeling to it, where, like, yeah, it's kind of yeah. goofy, but the dude's serious about his love for his wife. His who's love a, doll. Who's a blow up doll. Yeah. Yeah, Black Devil Dolls. I, I, I got I got a file on my computer, like, I'll send it to you. Okay. All right. Anyway, I digress. Yeah. Awesome. So, and this is also your first time playing Lost Vikings. What'd you think about that? That game was super fun. Awesome. That was really fun. That was challenging uh but not frustratingly challenging yeah like uh i think that's a i think that game is just a format that needs to exist still yeah and it doesn't like having just a puzzle game that is also a platformer and co-op yeah like i don't know i don't know too many games in history that are that specific um yeah. like every once in a while you'll get a puzzle on a platform game or you'll get a puzzle in, like, a co-op game or something. But not to that extent. It's like every map is a puzzle mixed with the co-op experience, and that's really awesome. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever gotten as far as we did together today because um, me and my friends fucking sucked at it when we were <laughs> kids. <laughs> we had problems today with yeah. it. It's, uh, it can definitely be a It takes a while game. to get used to what you have to do because it, I didn't like the fact that you had to... I keep going back and getting the other guy, and I couldn't do yeah. it if you were the main. If you controlled the window, I had to just be like, okay. Yeah. And and I, I kind of suck at co-op games because, I'll get these ideas in my head and try stuff, and I don't always yeah. share with my teammates. Huh. And uh, that's what the coconuts thing was, man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like, just just to give uh, because I don't have gameplay footage recording, and I'm fucking lazy. Uh, so there's this Egypt level, and. One of the guys can't jump, and all he can do is fall. <laughs> yeah, there's actually like one guy. There's a guy with a. There's a guy with a helmet on, or they all. Have, I don't understand. There's a guy that can run fast, and yeah, then there's a guy with a shield, jump, and he can jump. And there's a guy with a shield who can like glide, glide, but he can't jump. And then there's a dude with a bow and arrow and a sword that can't jump or glide, so he just or runs falls. or run. Yeah, he like just, he's kind of slow. He's, he, you need him to kill people, but he can't really go anywhere. Yeah. 
I don't know. I wonder if they have a mechanic. Like, I, we didn't test it out. We should have seen if you can ri- ram into enemies. <laughs> I was wondering about that, but <laughs> like, I doubt it. Then it was yeah, so that, easy to die in there. Like, <laughs> I feel like that. I feel like that would be too much to get. Like, I feel like yeah. that would be too much for one character because he can run really fast and jump. Yeah. And everyone seems to have just like uh, two things. Yeah, and so, it was quick because, like, in the first level, I was like, "Well, the running guy's useless. I'm, I've <laughs> never touched that guy." And the next thing I know, it's like, "Well, you definitely need him. Like, yeah, is, you have to have all three of them." And it's, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely an awesome game. We'll have to finish that at some point and then go and do number two, which is an insanely expensive game. I think like the cheapest version I've seen of number two for sale anywhere was like ninety bucks. Lost Vikings one or two? Yeah. Wow. So I think that was um, kind of surprised that it warranted a sequel. Yeah, I know, right? Like, uh, but it it came out when the PlayStation was out, and so that was on Super Nintendo and PlayStation. Um, so I'm curious what the PlayStation version is, if it's like any better, like graphically. Yeah. So, or uh, if they do anything with video, since you can actually do real vi- since you can do videos on PlayStation, whereas you couldn't do that. On the Super Nintendo. Um, shit, I had another... I, I hate this. I hate forgetting shit. This is why I always write shit down. Uh, but, yeah. That happens to me all the time. I never write anything down. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm supposed to. I used to carry a notepad around in my pocket all the time because my memory was so bad. Yeah. And I ended up just using it to tell people to eat shit. I think if I was a kid, well, I would like the Sega. Working. Like, I think if I was a kid, I would like the Sega better. Mm-hmm. Just because, like, it is it is lighter, and I, I do like a little bit of weight to my controller. Um, the only thing that, like, really kills the Sega one for me is how I hold it. So when I'm holding it, the way I hold this, my finger barely misses the left button. Mm. Right, and so I mean it's a personal problem, but on this one, my left finger right on the the uh, L button on this controller, so it's uh, granted that's not going to bother anything when I'm playing Sega, um, but if like uh, both of these controllers work with the Nintendo Switch and they work on PC as well, yeah. So if it's something like that, that throws me off. Like I tried playing Sonic Mania on my PC with it, um, and Every probably 30 seconds I was hitting that, mm-hmm. which sucks. So that's the only crappy thing about it for me. But uh, I wish we had this like shit that was this quality for it when we were kids. Yeah. Right. Like there wasn't like. But we had to. We had to get there. Yeah. <sighs> so yeah. they had st- they had wireless controllers when we were kids. They were just super fucking expensive. Yeah. So I did research, and there was one wireless Sega controller that I was able to find that came out back in the 90s, mm-hmm. but it was like 80 bucks. Yeah. Like, that's insane. Yeah, I definitely did not so, have any experience with wireless controllers. Yeah. <laughs> My mom I think uh, I think PlayStation was the first time I tried using a wireless like controller, because um, they were a little bit more common then. Yeah. They were still using the RF signals and everything, so it was it wasn't really any lag. Yeah. Um, I only had like three games for PlayStation. Yeah. I had Final Fantasy VII. One of them was like a demo disc out of PlayStation Magazine or something. Yeah, you got one of those every month. Yeah, like, like I didn't have a whole lot of games for PlayStation. I don't, I don't understand. Yeah. I'm not sure why that was, but it just was. I got a stack of them. Yeah. I definitely recommend if you're into Star Wars. I don't think you're into Star Wars as much as uh, Jay. Not as much Are as you? Jay, but I do like Star Wars. So this what this was probably the video game that got me more into Star Wars than anything. Hmm. So I I appreciated the original trilogy, but playing that was pretty cool. So the game is very derivative of the original trilogy, um, but it's like so there was a mixture of things. So you could. So, a lot of times you would use just a normal controller, but there's also levels where you would use a light gun, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. So, and it was um, a light gun on the PlayStation, so that was, it was pretty fun. Um, yeah, but that's, 
it made me appreciate it more. So they also have Rebel Assault 1, which does not look nearly as good as that one. Uh, Rebel Assault 1 is kind of hailed as the better one just because the story in it's better. Mm-hmm. Um, that one gets a lot of crap from people, but I like it just because when I was a kid, like, I enjoyed the Star Wars movies, and I saw them when they were re-released back in, I think it was like 94. I think that's when it was. I don't know. They uh, they started release, re-releasing them in theaters uh, back in like 94, I think it was, and... So I enjoyed going to that. Like, my sister took me to those. But that, like, I played that so much. Mm-hmm. Like, I think I probably played that as much as I played Final Fantasy VII. And I spent a long fucking time on Final Fantasy VII. Like, <laughs> so long that I didn't even I didn't even remember that there was more disc. And then I got to a certain point and was like, please insert disc two. And I didn't know where the fuck it was. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was telling you earlier, I, um... Uh, uh, they used to have those hint lines and shit. The like PlayStation and Sega used to have the tip lines that you'd call in. Yeah, it's like a dollar a minute, and they you'd be like, "Oh, hey, I'm playing this game. This is where I'm at. What do I do?" And uh, I was so intent that <laughs> that you could get into like that little fucking uh, oh god, what is that place? It's um, it's like a hotel. You're dressed up like a chick. Yeah. At one point, and there's like a hotel, at kind of like a brothel kind of thing, uh-huh. and I was so intent on getting in that fucking place, and I ended up spending like six bucks on the helpline <laughs> for them to tell me that no, you can't go in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh, so, they could have strung you along. Yeah. This went way off topic. Yeah. But it's it's all good, uh, yeah. So if you had, so if you were, uh, so ten year old, ten year old you versus you now, do you think both? Uh, which one would ten year old you want versus you now? Can you do that? Oh like, uh, well, I mean, I know ten year old me enjoyed stuff like the turbo buggy, so yeah. So he might like the M thirty better, but like. I also really liked my six button controller. And yeah. It, just the standard like kind of boomerang shape. Yeah, and yeah. so that that's why I like that one now is because it just reminds me of that. Yeah, that's cool. But I mean, like I know at that age I was always hoping that stuff like Mad Cats would be cool and work out for me, and it was just once yeah. I became a teenager when I started to realize what garbage it was, but. uh Man, like, uh... Um, I mean, even the the fucking power glove didn't work. <laughs> yeah. I've been, I've been uh, looking at getting one that's broken just for a display. Yeah. Like, that's just funny. Like, I kind of want to have one that I carry with me just so that way I can, like, uh, do that old school... Like, I, I don't know if people actually get, used to do this, but, like, how in cartoons they would, like, take a glove and slap somebody with it. <laughs> take it off and challenge someone to a duel with a power glove yeah. so bad like I challenge thee and it's got um, the fucking button thing on the back of the hand so yeah. it knocks him out I remember I had a friend come over cause I like I said my mom didn't have a lot of money so we couldn't get a lot of that stuff but my yeah. I had a friend come over and they brought their uh, um, power glove and we couldn't figure out even how to hook it up yeah. So Dude, they, I've they never a, officially used a power glove. <laughs> so researching the power glove, they had one for the PlayStation, the PlayStation mm-hmm. 2, and the N64. I did have a light gun for the PlayStation that had like multiple things that you could hook up to it to like yeah. make it a, a cannon or like, you know, whatever, or just different stuff with it. And with that came a game that had uh, multi games in it. One of them was Toe Jam and Earl. Nice. And so that was my. Uh, introduction to Toe Jam and Earl. Yeah, Toe Jam and Earl. That's uh, that's my bread and butter. Yeah. Uh, Which is why when you were wanting to play it that one time, I was like, "Fuck!" The only experience I have with Toe Jam and Earl yeah. is a light gun game. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's very different. Yeah. That so that the game we played is a lot more like Toe Jam and Earl one. Yeah. So the the game we're talking about is Toe Jam and Earl Back in the Groove, which has an amazing soundtrack. Um, if you're into video game soundtracks. That is on that soundtrack is out on vinyl and it is fantastic. Um, 
It's like 50 bucks. <laughs> I, if you're into video game soundtracks, go to coreyjohnson.bandcamp.com. He's a friend of mine. He does really good work and all that. So pay what you want so you can get... Not not to dissuade you from going to get the Toe Jam yeah. soundtrack. I just wanted to plug my buddy. He just put out a new EP. <laughs> it's all good. Um, you, do you know what his link is? coreyjohnson.bandcamp.com No E in Corey. No E in Corey. Okay. Yeah. He did a, a Legend of Zelda... Um, tribute album, and he did a Earthbound tribute album, I believe. Corey Johnson. Da, 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 da. And yeah, so he's got like um, digital. Is the album called Duels? Yeah, that's his. Okay, okay, that's his new EP where he just did a song a month thing last year, and then he threw them on there. I don't think I've ever looked at Bandcamp on the computer. I think I've always done it through the app. Is it Bandcamp? Yeah, I think that I've got like all of. Uh, I love Bandcamp. You can I find my it. music on Bandcamp at oliverTwitch.bandcamp.com. I think I've got I've got all your stuff physically. Well, I'll sell so, your listeners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay. Do I know you don't have all my stuff physically because Deep Thirteen yeah. sold out long before I met you. Yeah. I, I think I think some of it I pirated. Is my stuff <laughs> piratable? Yeah, if, if you can wow. listen, if you can listen to it on Bandcamp, if you can just stream it, you can you can pull the audio. All of it's free on Bandcamp. <laughs> that's, that's fine. That's still pirating. Oh, that makes me feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> pirating my free stuff. That's messed up. Let's see what he's got here. He's got Skate Free or Die Hard. Are these like tributes or are they... Uh... They're all cover songs from various video games. Okay. He, uh, we did a song together a long time ago. It was a cover of a Tubbering song called Psychology is BS. Yeah. And um, and then we decided we were going to do a uh, Tubbering tribute album together. And uh, I know he he did get... He put a uh, did a remix for Tubbering that got on their remix album. And then he got really into the video game music. And so... Our little project got thrown on the back burner forever. <laughs> do, you, do you still have Reason on your computer? Probably. So I've got a, uh, it's called Supercart, and it is a synthesizer that emulates different chips from different uh, consoles. And it is fun to play with. Hmm. Um, it is nowhere near as extravagant as the, I think it's a, hold on. What is it? There's a synthesizer, so there's a cartridge that you can get it's 80 bucks um it's a sega cartridge that you plug into it only works on the sega the uh original genesis or the genesis 2 because both of those use the same uh yamaha chip and um the the genesis 3 actually uses an emulator mm -hmm. for the audio so the audio is it's shit on the genesis 3 don't ever buy a genesis 3 they're crap <laughs> <laughs> um they're much cheaper than a gen than a Genesis one or two, but yeah. uh, you're gonna be missing out. Like in like, I think it's like there's a list of like forty or fifty games that don't work on the Genesis three, like from the Genesis catalog. So that's kind of shitty. Like yeah. it wasn't even made by Sega. It was licensed out to. Uh... Oh God, was it Mad Cats? <laughs> no. Like, one of them, what, if, what if Mad Cats like wanted to sponsor you? <laughs> God, do do would, they exist? They do because they're doing the rock band stuff. It, but it would hurt so bad because my podcast, another unnecessary plug for you, uh, Nerd Cult Underground. If Mad Cats wanted to uh, sponsor Nerd Cult Underground. It would hurt so much. <laughs> You're like, this is the point where I sell out. Yeah. You know, I, you know I've sold out when I start. Tired of your regular video game controllers? Pick up Mad Cats. Like, yeah, you know I've sold out massively when I do that. Okay, it was Majesco. That's the company that made all the Mexican variants of Sega games. So that's uh that's what this is. 
That's what the tournament fighters oh, yes. is. So assembled in Mexico, this one's made in Japan. So uh, Konami games were actually assembled in America. Uh, most other Genesis games were assembled in Japan. Uh, once a game reached its income cycle for like its actual profitable income cycle for these games, they would be licensed out to be create to be remade by Majesco. Um, and they actually used recycled parts. I don't have my screwdriver here. But if you take this apart, if you take them apart, the PCBs are vastly different. Hmm. Um, all the stuff from Majesco, or at least the stuff that I've seen anyways, looks like it's using recycled parts. Um, and even the PCBs are like missing lines. So like the games work and they work as intended, but if like if it doesn't use pin 12, they don't even run a line on the PCB for it Right. at that point because everything is just like saving as much money as possible for them. Makes sense. Uh, which explains the uh, thing with the Sega Genesis 3 and them emulating the sound on it. Yeah. Because it's cheaper than using that Yamaha uh, thing. Chip. That's what it is. It's chip. Okay, Sega Genesis synthesizer cartridge. Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. Oh, dude, some uh, techno guy released an album on the Sega Genesis this year, um, 2019. Was that his name? No. Oh. Like, he literally, like, um, he made a full-out just techno album using nothing but that one chip. And it all fits on a Sega cartridge, and mm. that's how you get the album. Yeah, I, I met a guy in, in uh, Knoxville named Doctor Isaac. Yeah. Or Doc Isaac. He's a rapper, and he does all of his stuff using Nintendo. And that was pretty cool because he had like the, the big like fucking fat tube TV and like an NES there, and he would have to like. It was pretty interesting to watch him work. He was he was a really good rapper. Where the fuck is this? It's not that one. In the Super Nintendo Sega Genesis thing I was singing was the left rights. Some of you jug juggalos might know about the left rights. Depends on how. I think many crumbs you follow. Yeah. Cat Skull Electronics. That sounds familiar. That's it. All right. So you get a. It's 80 bucks. You get the cartridge, which enables you to access just the synth module or the uh, chip that acts as a synth module. And it gives you a MIDI adapter that plugs into controller 2 port. Um, so it's got a USB C port on it for MIDI over USB. And it also has a MIDI through TRS. So have you seen those? The. TRS adapters that turn into MIDI. Maybe. So it's just like a headphone jack, and that's where the MIDI signal goes through. I mean, I haven't used... I mean, since they started running MIDI through USB, I haven't used MIDI stuff in a while. Yeah, so I... Oh, God damn, I don't want to... This. Hold on. Boom. Yeah, so, I've seen that. Yeah, so Gen MDM then that's like that's a MIDI adapter for the Sega Genesis. Alright, so USB C and TRS which goes to the MIDI out. Or MIDI in, rather. So I, I feel like that that just doesn't look strong. Like as as hard as it is to plug and unplug shit from there, mm -hmm. I just wouldn't trust that to unplug it. Yeah. Like I would have to plug it in and never touch it again. So but, and if you, like, this isn't even a Sega Genesis. This is the analog, um, God, what is it? I think it's the analog MD. That's what it is. Analog. Mega SG, that's what it's called. 
So it's a hardware clone of the Sega Genesis. Um, so what it does is they use FPGA chips to clone the original chips. So when you play this, it's like you're playing it on actual Sega hardware. Hmm. Uh, but this has full 1080p output, which is really awesome. What if this one for sale? For almost 200 bucks. But it does come with the M30. Yeah. I didn't buy that. <laughs> I would like to. I don't have the money. <laughs> but yeah, these are... Uh, they also make an SNES and a Nintendo. So, Oh, God, they have this coming out. This looks fucking awesome. The Analog Pocket. It is a Game Boy... Uh, let's see what all it plays. So, Game Boy Games, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advanced, uh, Game Gear, Neo Geo Pocket, Atari Lynx, and more. Wow. Like, all there. But, it's it, again, it's all using those FPGA chips. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, like, so it's going to be like you're playing it on the actual hardware. The difference is this screen has ten times the resolution of those mm -hmm. old screens old screens but given analog's track record of making just amazing systems that output amazingly um i, I trust that so i think this is going to be 200 i don't remember i've him yeah. out on buying game boy again just buy this because it, co it covers your Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, all like Game Gear. He's kind of one of them old school guys. I like having the old systems. I get, I, I, I get that. <laughs> I mean, I understand yeah. that that is convenient. I know. Uh, I was going to, at one point, I was looking into getting yeah. a uh, retro or retcon or something like that. Something. Yeah. Uh, Retron? Those yeah. are fucking horrible. Well, uh,. I don't know if it was called retro. I know uh, Mark swears by him, and he, like, he's really into yeah uh, that kind of gaming. So the way the retrons and all that shit work, and like the hyperkin, all the all the consoles like this, they're all actually emulators. So they use yeah. an open source emulator, and what it does is when you pop the cartridge in, it takes a minute before you start it up, but it copies the data from the cartridge to the console. These don't work like that. Okay. These are literally you're playing it off the con off the off the cartridge like you are, like you would be using the original system. This was expensive as fuck. This was five hundred dollars. Yeah. The Nintendo um, had a built-in multi multi-tap though, and it also did 1080p and it looked fucking fantastic. Hmm. So and then they also have the Super NT, same thing, all FPGA clone chips. Um. So, it's, their stuff is amazing and looks fantastic. It always uses whatever the highest uh, compatibility is for as far as the video output. So, like, uh, Super Nintendo, I believe the highest thing that it would do was, uh, like, uh, RGB output. So, when you run it through that, it's upscaling the RGB output. Um, when you're doing... Sega Genesis, it also was S was RGB, not in America, but on like the foreign models, like the PAL models, uh, they had start connectors. I don't know if you know what that is. So um, it's not something that ever came to America, but it is in Japan. That is a start connector. Okay. And so that will that runs RGB signal, right? Okay. But uh, so whenever their systems come out that's what it's pulling from and then uh the nt was that wasn't even their design really that doesn't that's the only one i don't think that uses fpga chips uh the nt which is the nintendo clone uses actual nintendo motherboards and what they do is they have their own uh box printed for it and then there's a guy in Australia that made HDMI adapters that pull straight from the GPU, and they do the mod themselves, and then they put it in their own box. Okay. So, which is why that thing is five hundred dollars, because that chip, the HDMI upscaler for the in, for the NES, is uh, like one hundred and twenty bucks, just for the chip. Mm -hmm. So. 
But yeah. Nerd out, nerding out on some video games. Okay. But, uh. Alright. So, yeah. I've been working on talking about these for the past week. And I just haven't. That week? Week and a half. Thing. But, uh. Yeah, they're both about the same price, so this is 30 bucks, and so is this. The difference, the uh, the Sega Wireless 2.4 gigahertz is 30 bucks uh, by Retrobit, and it comes with a nifty little case, which you cannot see through this, but that's the point of it. That's the reason it's, like, it's got transparency there, like, they... They talk about, like, displaying it in there, but you can't fucking see it. Not very well, no. Yeah, like, you're not displaying this shit anywhere. <laughs> like, you can kind of see it in the camera right there because the light's shining off of it. Yeah. But that's it. Like, uh, if it's just hanging out like that, it just looks like a box. Yeah. So, so that should not be a selling point. Um, but that's 30 bucks, and it comes with a USB adapter... As well as a Sega Genesis adapter. The M30 is a Bluetooth wireless one made by the lovely people at 8 BitDo, which makes some really awesome retro controllers, but they're not exact clones. Um, these are 30 bucks as well, but you have to buy the adapter separately, which is like $15, mm. which kind of sucks. So you end up spending like 45 bucks if you're going to play it on the Sega Genesis. If you're not going to play it on the Sega Genesis, it, it natively works with the Switch and PC and Android and all that just through Bluetooth. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I, I think either one of them are decent choices, honestly. Um, yeah, I mean... Other than very, very minute lag, and then the only problem I've had out of the M30. Yeah. Like, that's the only thing that I've had out of that. And most people, in fact, every person I've read that, have had, that has had that problem, they say that there's a screw in the inside that holds the D-pad on, and you loosen that up. And that sound goes away, and I've tried out all sorts of different shit to make that go away including that and have not been able to make that go away so that is my mod that is something that is probably just specific to mine the only thing i haven't done is just soak it in oil hmm. like that i wonder sounds... if that would work yeah i don't know <laughs> like, it could that doesn't sound very safe well it'll lubricate it i mean right. for the controller no, I mean, like, I would take the, I would take it apart and take the D-pad out and then just, like, soak the no. D-pad in a I thought you were talking about just dipping the whole controller <laughs> oh, <in no>. oil. <laughs> Well, as long as it's not electrically conductive oil, yeah. then, yeah. <laughs> uh, when I was in college, we built a computer that used oil. It was just, like, a giant tub of oil, and we put all the parts in there. Mm -hmm. None of it was moving parts, so it worked. Hmm. Like, never got fucking hot. Like, we didn't have any fans on anything. Wow. So, uh, yeah, that shit works. So, uh, we I think the longest we ever put it under stress load is like an hour. Uh -huh. So, but it uh, the the oil never really heated up. Like you could never see any discernible difference by like putting your hand up over the oil. So it wasn't. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a really fucking weird way to make a computer. Yeah, sounds like it. So. Uh, I don't recommend it. It was just a college thing. It does make me think of Metal Aquilips when they were recording their album on water. For some reason, that's what that makes me think of. <laughs> I haven't seen you that. You haven't seen that episode? Oh, so <laughs> funny. Were they like, because they like, did do something acoustically? No, I mean, like, they recorded it in, onto water. So, like, the water was the recordings. And, <laughs> and at one point, like, they, they recorded a whole album on this and then, like, got fucked up and started drinking in water. <laughs> He's like, you're <laughs> drinking the bass. And that episode's so funny. That show was so funny. <laughs> I uh, I haven't seen a lot of that. So. They went out into the Mariana Trench to record their album because it was the deepest, darkest place on Earth. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Uh, all right. 
Uh, that is it. That's all that we have on this. This went way off the rails and the other shit, but it was fun. Uh, Juggalos, this is your homie Snorlax, which my name actually came from James and his podcast. <laughs> so Nerd Cult Underground. Yeah, Nerd Cult Underground. Check that out. Uh, it's on LeoLegacy.com. That's that's the website? Yeah. Yeah. LeoLegacy.com. It's L-E-A-L Legacy.com. Uh, check out all the podcasts. They have numerous podcasts up, over there. Make sure to pay attention to the one that says Nerd Cult Underground. Because home. it updates more than the others. <laughs> it does, yeah. I think uh, I think the only other one that does is, that does remotely... Uh, uh, that's the one that Jay does by himself. Yeah. Because so. BitFan Fort became kind of just like a seasonal Christmas thing, and then we didn't even yeah. do it this last year. And uh, uh, why, why, why Are You Like This kind of broke up because one of the girls moved. So they stopped doing it. Wow, why'd they stop doing the horror podcast? I actually, I listened to like every episode of that. Um, Just get busy? Well, because Jay and I had a had another fallen out. And, yeah, that was uh, when he was with that chick, right? Yeah, and by yeah. the time we got back together and kissed and made love, uh, made up, uh, <laughs> I was on acid at the time. So. <laughs> but, uh, oh, was that was that that, that night? That was that night. That's oh, when, that was when he broke up with her and came over. And, um, but uh, yeah, like it was just it got to a point where uh, um, Brittany and uh, Lenora didn't want to deal with it so they just yeah so they just stopped doing it which it, it is disappointing Thanks. but i mean now they're both doing various other things and yeah like i've, I've talked to them about getting back into it. jay is very hard to work with and yep because uh my friend uh i don't even i've never worked with him but yeah uh, i love jay and i love doing the podcast <laughs> with him but uh, like my friend scab was going to do a podcast for for uh this for the little legacy and that was that dude over there that i with like the keyboards yeah and he uh he's very particular and he didn't like that at the time jay didn't know how to uh upload large files and so he would compress everything down and my friend was like man i put a lot of work into editing this and like fixing it to where yeah. it sounds perfect and then it just gets compressed down and he was like I'm, i don't want any part of this anymore so yeah either, jay can be hard to work with sometimes but you need you can compress things just to a certain extent. I mean, of course, if yeah. you're going like, if you're going from like a 24-bit wave file that's at like 96 kilohertz, and you're dropping it down to 16-bit, like 44, that you're gonna have some loss there. But uh, yeah, yeah, like keep it, especially if it's online, keep it at 24-bit. Yeah. You know? Which he finally got to where he can just post, like, yeah, bigger files. So was that like a was that like a uh, limitation of his bandwidth or something? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. And that, I can understand that. Yeah, I mean, it was it was just a, a situation that wasn't really, like, Scab figured he could do better on his own. And then he stopped yeah. doing it. Cause, but now he's working on music. Yeah. With Rez Grizzio. Oh, that's cool. I didn't, I didn't know he was actually doing, like, a project. Mm -hmm. He has a uh, album he did that was a soundtrack to a, like, Twitch or yeah, Twitch streaming game show type thing. I don't know what the show's called, uh, which is which is disappointing. I, I apologize because it's pretty fun. And uh, but he's got a soundtrack to that, and now he's almost finished with his just album for himself. That's what's up. Yeah, I, I definitely want to hear that. I uh, I enjoyed you know hanging out with him and listening like just yeah, we can do it. Up. Shit. It might be Resgrizio dot Bandcamp. I'm not sure. I know uh, the album is called Press Start. Yeah. Um, yeah. I enjoy, I, we worked together for a long time, he and I. He was one of the first guys that I uh, decided to do all over Twitch, what, what became all over Twitch. With. Yeah. Is Mark still doing that? Yeah. Are, are y'all still working on music? In a way. <laughs> <laughs> In a way. Mark so. is working on and I mean, I got more stuff to put. Mark's the one that I was talking about. He's got a show on YouTube called uh, Retro... I don't know. It's like a retro game review show. Yeah. Um, it's really cool. It's really fun. And that's what he's focusing more on. Um, we should have him review Lost Vikings. I was thinking that after we played it. 
because I like his reviews, but uh, I'm, I'm looking up on YouTube right now what his um, thing is called, but uh, I think it's just called Retro TV. But uh, also, send me the links for that stuff. I'll uh, pop it up on the yeah. description down at the bottom. Yeah. For all the juggalos, check that out and uh, not be assholes in comments. Yeah. So. Don't Which be have, assholes in comments. A, a, a nice little story for you juggalos out there, because I'm not a juggalo, but I'm I'm jugga friendly. Um, I've I've had some asshole juggalos treat me badly, but I also enjoy stuff that ICP puts out, and I have a lot of respect for those guys. But like, one time I was in a chat room. And uh, some kid was on there, and he said, you know, I'm a juggalo, I'm a juggalo. And I made some reference to uh, Big Money Hustlers. I don't remember what I said, but it was a quote to Big Money Hustlers. And he said, he said, I don't know what you're talking about. And I said, bitch, you ain't no ninja. And he said, I didn't say I was a ninja. I said I was a juggalo. And I was like, all right, slow down. Before we go any further. <laughs> I was like, what have you actually heard from ICP? And he's like, oh, I just listened to, like, I think The Wraith had just come out. Yeah. And that was all he'd heard. Oh. And I was like, all right, well, let this yeah, yeah, elder yeah. friend of the Juggalos come in and introduce you to a whole world of psychopathic records. Yeah. <laughs> it was just one of those moments where I was like, wait a second. I, I didn't say I was a ninja. I said I was a Juggalo. Like, okay, there's something wrong here. Have you? Have you? So this is going on much longer than I thought it was originally. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I, I just no, wanted you're to good, share my one good ICP story. No, you're good, actually. Uh, that, <laughs> like... Getting getting someone that's an outsider to that community. Um, do you know anything about the gang, uh, the gang classification with it? Just the stuff that I've heard. Like I started reading a book about Juggalos that talked about it. Yeah. Um, but it, I kind of fell off of it. It didn't really interest what, me. So there's like three books that have come out recently that I can think of. What which one is it? Family? Is no, that it? I think it's just called Juggalo. Okay. Yeah, I think I saw that last time I came up. And then I saw the I saw I watched uh, Trigger Warning with uh, Killer Mike, and he has a Juggalo on a couple of episodes of that that uh, I learned a little bit more about. Like I had distanced myself from the the, and not really on purpose or anything. I just kind of moved on with my life and ended up distancing myself from the Juggalo culture by yeah. the time that happened. So yeah, so like. Um... So I thought it was over because a couple of years ago I heard I heard that it was being rescinded. But so the the FBI put out a thing and basically said that Juggalos are a makeshift gang, right? And even a lot of those people are like, "Well, yeah, it's only like five or ten percent of Juggalos." I'm like, so that so that makes you label the whole group of people gang members, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, uh, so like. <laughs> I remember being in high school and they accused anybody that wore pentagrams of being, being gang this. members. Yeah. They or, called them gang symbols. Yeah. And like, I mean, I was, I, I'm fairly pagan. And uh, like at the time I went to school with this, uh, with somebody who's, uh, their mom was a witch and she yeah. was like a big mama too. So like it was a nice <laughs> blend of both worlds when they told her, that, when, when they told the, my friend that they had to take their, uh, pinnacle off because it was a gang sign mama came in with the thunder <laughs> nice um so and last the last real news update i saw about it was in 2017 it was a it went to court so the court so originally the courts had dismissed the ca the circuit court i believe had dismissed the case the court above them came back and said no the case still needs to happen that it shouldn't have been dismissed so then they actually went to court about it, but then the court found that they had no real they had no real evidence showing that lives had been hurt. Yeah. Um, by that de by that designation. Yeah. And uh, so it that's the last update I've seen about it. So at this point, I'm like, I'm uh, the the thing that I've been thinking about recently about it is uh, do you remember the West Memphis Three? Vaguely. So do you remember, do you remember that story at all? Anything that happened? No, about? I, I remember that. I remember hearing the term West Memphis Three, but I don't right. remember so, anything about it. Um, For all I know, I heard it from you. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So I lived in Memphis at the time, so it's a it's a big part. Uh, it's a big memory for me because I 
Yeah. I lived in that area when that happened. Um, West Memphis is Arkansas. I lived in actual Memphis, Tennessee. Um, and so they found three little boys dead, and they had their, they all had their genitals mutilated, right? And so there was this was dead in the middle of satanic panic of the eighties and nineties. Yeah. Right, so they automatically like, oh man, general mutilation, oh! Yeah. And um, so they basically pick out these three kids that all listen to metal and wear metal shirts and, you know, like a couple of them might paint their nails or whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, they, one of them I think wore a pentagram. So. Yeah. Those three kids that didn't, that had no evidence at all towards them. They uh, they spent what twenty thirty years in prison, so which is what you call a witch hunt. Yeah, <laughs> like uh, some of them were on death row, if not all of them. Damn, if I remember correctly, like and they got out and uh, they got out a couple of years ago. Damian Eccles, um, he's kind of the most outspoken one. He's the one that is out of them, the one that's in the spotlight the, the most. Unfortunate name of Damien. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, especially <laughs> in that situation. Like, Thanks, Mom. I thought it was a cool name until. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I was thinking about it, I was like, that's like the absolute worst case scenario of it what is. that leads to. It is, because I'm, I mean, Columbine was a big deal for, for me because of the effect it had on schools, and I don't, yeah. I can't remember what our age difference is. Um, I'm uh, I'm 33. Okay, it's not so much was, then. I'm 38. Yeah, so um, it's you were young in your I was in high, high school, school and uh, because and I I, I had just got a trench coat from my grandmother that I wanted because I gambit and <laughs> I still have it, but uh, I got the trench coat from my grandmother. It doesn't fit me anymore. But um, as soon as I got the trench coat, uh, Columbine happened. We weren't allowed to wear them. And then also, I was at that point in my life that everyone talks about movies and stuff where I was getting picked on and bullied, and I was like, I'm going to stand up for myself. I'm going to fucking fight back. Yeah. And then people were terrified of me. Because <laughs> you black. were bullied. Because I wore all black. Oh, man. I was bullied, and Columbine <laughs> just happened. And, yeah. Um, like, oh, man, I've treated this kid like shit for the past five years. Yeah. He like, might kill me. They were worried about that. And I, I neither had the access to weapons nor the fucking energy to deal with it like yeah like i've like, always been kind of lackadaisical about that stuff and like mark and i actually because we went to high school together we were on the schools like he was number one on the quote-unquote bomb list and i was number two yeah because we both were just we just kept ourselves and wore black clothing and stuff and he was really into the misfits and i was really into marilyn yeah. manson and and it was like they just assumed that we were going to kill everybody and yeah neither of us had the energy for that shit <laughs> yeah like i i Oh God, I hate that. I yeah, remember someone fucking, coming up to me once because Mark was so scary that I was afraid to talk to him before I met him because he always had like red lines under his eyes. I thought he stayed up all night doing satanic stuff. Yeah, and um, <laughs> which he, he might have. Like... <laughs> but, but I remember like after a while, like because uh, he was dating this girl named Brittany who lived down the street from us. We rode the same school bus, and we were both on the bus. And one of my neighbors was like, "Dude, you know Mark." And I was like, yeah. And he goes, man, I heard that there was a gang fight in the hallway, and he walked in the middle of it, and everybody stopped. And I told Mark about that, and Mark's like, I probably wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> the greatness thrust upon him. He had so many legends so spoken well. about him. It was so funny. Oh, man. Fucking, uh... And now he's my co-writer for Oliver Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> That shit happened when I was in sixth grade, and um, my little my little group in sixth grade was really really diverse. Yeah. It was really it was really weird. So I was like the white guy. Mm -hmm. Then we had two Latino kids, an Asian kid, and then five black kids, and that was my little circle. Yeah. Right. And uh, God damn it. Sorry, my uh, thing was going to sleep. Um, <laughs> So, like, we all kind of fucked off, man. I mean, our yeah. our school didn't give a shit about us. Society didn't give a shit about us at that age. So, yeah. we fucked off and just kind of did whatever we wanted to. And uh, so, we were, like, five minutes late coming back from lunch. And it was our English teacher. English or lit? Is that the same thing? 
Was that the same thing in sixth grade? I think, it, no, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't I, my class, but. So, um, depending on the grade, like, sixth grade, I had a separate English and a separate lit teacher. Hmm. Eighth grade, I had the same English lit teacher. Like, it was all rolled into one. So, it was really fucking weird. All my memories blend together before freshman year. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, like, so, a lot of shit happened to me. <laughs> yeah. So, um, she flipped the fuck out. Like, she just, like, I mean, like, for real, flipped the fuck out. Like, she was this older woman, older white woman, and she just started crying and screaming. Like, because th- this was, like, a week after Columbine. Mm-hmm. And she was like, ah, oh, this is the kind of shit those kids that did Columbine would do. <laughs> and I'm like, we came back from lunch late. I had the shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I mean, they were human. They probably did have to shit at some point. Columbine was to high school as 9-11 was to the airport. Yeah. It changed everything <laughs> and made white people way more nervous. <laughs> yeah. I do remember one girl, like her boyfriend was, he was kind of a, like a gangster type thug guy and, and he was always picking on me and like, a, I don't remember his name, but I remember people telling, like adults telling me. Don't fuck with him. His mom's a teacher, and he tends to have weapons on him and stuff. And I'm like, I'm whatever. But Why one, would he have weapons? Why is that? Is that like a thing? Like, well, his mom's a teacher, so he probably has weapons on him. Well, he it was just a matter of both things. Like, his okay. mom was a teacher, so he got away with more shit. But he was also like, he would like have a knife on him or some bullshit. And but uh, one time, his girlfriend was like, "Do you think you could beat him up?" And I was like, "I don't know." Like, fucking. I've never been that guy that says, yeah, man, I'll kick his ass, because cause you don't know. Um, like, I've, I've picked fights with people that would have probably murdered me, but yeah. but uh, this guy, like, I was like, I said, I don't know. And she goes, I bet you would. So I'm like, man, his own girlfriend is convinced that I could take him. Like, she was like, it's just because you hate him so much. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I couldn't remember his name if I had to, though. Like, these these people did not mean much to me in life. Yeah. I, they were I, all NPCs. I uh, I think there's only one teacher I had that really... No, I had two. So my sixth grade math teacher, which was also my only teacher, Mr. Tucker, he was really awesome. Um, he took special interest in my life because my, my home life at the time was really fucked up. My home life was kind of fucked up until I moved out of home. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then my... Uh, eighth grade study hall teacher uh which ended up being like my ninth grade english teacher and 10th grade english teacher not actually 10th grade this was my it was the same technical year i failed english my first ninth grade year so it was like i was still a ninth grader Hmm. even though i passed everything else yeah like uh uh she me and her actually still talk she's really awesome she was uh did you ever have like just the hot teacher in school that like all the guys are like, oh man, she's probably boning. She's probably boning some of the students. I did, and I'm pretty yeah. sure she was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she like, was a drama she teacher. She probably was. She was I a still drama believe teacher. That. She, yeah, I, I'm not convinced that she wasn't. She was kind of a bitch, but uh, yeah. But she was hot, and she she was my English teacher, and she was also the drama teacher. Yeah. Those, like, those, she's, those she's tend to go one. hand in hand. It does. Well, that was the way my school, and I mean, I guess a lot of schools did that, where they're like, okay, this guy really wants to be the soccer coach. Teach history. Yeah. Whatever. That, I, I don't know high school sucks. I feel, I feel like that might be one of the problems <laughs> we're having right now in I graduated society, 20 years like... ago, and I'll still say Smyrna High School sucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, that whole gym teacher's teaching shit, <laughs> I feel like that's probably part of the reason we have such a stupid society <laughs> those who can't do teach and those like, who can't teach teach gym yeah <laughs> so it's uh i got friends that are teachers and i love them <laughs> actually one of my friends uh she's a badass her um we call her a little huntress and uh she's a teacher and one time i was working because i work at a comic shop and i was at work and she was there and somebody came in to try to sell us makeup and my yeah i don't know why they do this shit but they came in shop. yeah they came in and they were like don't you have a special something that it always bugs me cause that they always assume that like you know don't you have like a special lady in your life you'd like to buy this makeup for it's like what makes you think i i think i would look good with this makeup on myself yeah. but uh 
Yeah, they came in. She came in and she said, you know, do you have a special lady in your life? I said, I'm afraid of women. <laughs> and she said, she said, what about your mom? What about you? I said, my mom is the reason why I'm afraid of women. <laughs> and then she like pointed at like a uh, little huntress who was there and was like, well, what about her? And I said, she's a teacher. That's like the scariest type of woman there is. Like I just, <laughs> she was not getting any crown on me. <laughs> Oh god! So to be fair, to, to be fair, granted, I guess like nobody has future sight uh, to do this, but in sixth grade, I did get in trouble for threatening to blow up the school. <laughs> this was after woman had the freak out, but um, no, um, after she had that freak out, um, we all had to go to the guidance counselor, and we had in school suspension for like a week because you were late coming back from lunch. Yeah, like. Oh. I'm like, fuck y'all, dude. Yeah. I, I, I have various things made me not trust authority throughout elementary yeah. school. So, the, the worst thing I did, I never threatened to blow up the school, which is good because they were so ready for me to. My threat to blow up the school was a joke. Yeah. It was, um, we were all cool with the art teacher, so she would let us come in and like fuck around in her classroom before school started. So we'd get up there and like hang out in her classroom. And, uh, don't tell me it wasn't one of those, I'm going to fuck around and accidentally blow up the school. <laughs> like, no, <lines. laughs> no, it wasn't nothing like that. It was uh, uh, like, uh, what are those? The projectors. Uh -huh. Right? You remember those? So um, she had on there just like a generic phrase that was like, today we're, gonna, we're going to learn. And I wrote, how to make a pipe bomb and kill people. Damn. I think it was the end kill people part that got you in trouble. <laughs> like, so, um, I feel like if she would have caught it, it would have just been a talking to kind of thing between me and her. Yeah. But she didn't catch it, and she flipped the fucking thing on in, front, in first period. Oh. Uh. <laughs> so, uh. Some of your classmates freaked out. Probably. <laughs> um, uh, the teen, fucking teen angst got, got yeah. me into a shit ton of trouble. Uh, um, God, where where else was I going with that? Um, I don't know. We've gone way off the rails. Like, didn't the show end like twenty minutes ago? It did. <laughs> yeah, it did. Yeah, we start it did. talking about our childhood and fucking high school and all that stuff. I'm gonna have to figure out something else to put for the title instead of just this. <laughs> Well, I honestly, because I thought we were just going to talk about the X-Men game and then like start yeah, talking about the controllers and I was like, like, I was like I'm not prepared there, for that because I, I, I'm not into the There was nothing to talk stuff. about about X-Mutants, right? So it was supposed to X be compared. Sucked. Yeah, it sucked. It, that's how horrible it was. I think we played it for maybe 15 minutes tops. Yeah. We played X-Men for like an hour. Yeah. We played uh, <laughs> Lost Vikings more. That yeah. That was the I, best game of them. I, I mean, X-Men was fun, but... Uh, yeah, I mean... Once, yeah, we, once we figured out how to actually do shit in that game, Jesus Christ, you definitely need a manual for that one. Yeah, and it's very old school. You fuck up once, you gotta go all the way back. Yep. Um, so, um... Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was talking about my t uh, my uh, English te English teacher. Um, I'm, st I'm still friends with her to an extent. So, like, me and her talk on Facebook every couple of months. Um, we were gonna do a podcast together. Which would have been fucking weird. Yeah. Like, I don't know too many people who go do a podcast with their high school English teacher. Right? Like, not like, you know, 15 years after the fact. Yeah. So, uh, but we both, uh, we had a really long discussion about the movie Midsommar. Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? No. Not yet? Oh, God. I've heard good things. It is fantastic. Y'all have it, don't y'all? I no. think I'll, God, it, someone think so. picked it up. I don't, I don't remember who it was. I picked up Brightburn. Yeah, I remember that because I watched like, it. Yeah, that was the last movie I picked up. And that was, Brittany that, still that won't was watch awesome. it. She won't watch it? She just isn't interested. I'm like, come on, give it a shot. Yeah. She, like, but that, that's how she felt. Like Recently, she watched The Blair Witch Project for the first time on VHS, which is the best way to watch that movie. Yeah. And then I was like, well, let's watch Blair Witch 2. Because it looks shadows. so shitty. And, uh, and she's like, I don't want to watch that. That looks like... She's like, I, I said, well, I do appreciate some early 2000s cheese. I said, oh, it's very much early 2000s cheese. Yeah. Finally, I convinced her to watch it, and it's like I'm like, it's not that bad. It's got a lot of interesting things, stuff yeah. that's kind of tropes now, but uh, it's because it invented a lot of those tropes. Yeah, and her only real problem with the Book of Shadows was that there was no book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
never thought about that. She was uh, like, wait a second, there wasn't even a book in this movie. <laughs> yeah, like I, I really, I really liked the sequel. Yeah. So yeah, book. Uh, that's that's what it was. Yeah, that's the sequel, yeah. Book of Shadows. Um, I, I did really like the sequel. I also really loved the soundtrack for the sequel. Yeah. So the only thing I think it's got I got hit on it. Like, yeah, did, are they still around? No, but uh, the singer is doing like country music. Yeah. That's a change. It's not bad either. Like it's like, like it's more like country western. Like it's not like, uh, I mean, just look up uh, Jason Charles Miller. He just put out an album called End of the Wasteland. And it's pretty good. All right, Blair Witch Two, Book of Shadows. All right, so Godhead Pod. Back when I was still okay with them, uh, Dave Grohl and Tony Iommi. Is it Iomi or Iomi? I would say Iomi, but I don't know. Uh, Rob Zombie, which, System of a Down. Which you got to say, how many, I mean, who really expected Rob Zombie to let anyone use Dragula in their movie? <laughs> yeah. We um, laughed so hard about that. Slaves on Dope, have you ever listened to them? So it, they, Maybe. They had two albums, I think, that I have. Um, Manson, Death in Vegas, which I don't remember at all. Project which, 86, which is fucking Marilyn awesome. Manson, they, the opening credit song is Marilyn Manson's uh, Disposable Teens. Yeah. But that's not the song on the soundtrack. Suicide is Painless? Yeah, Suicide yeah, is Painless, which is, I don't know if that's a cover of the MASH song or if it's another I, I song. I but... Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah. That, that's what it is. Um... Death in Vegas. I've never listened to Death in Vegas. Um, it, I mean, besides the soundtrack, because I listen to that thing on fucking repeat. Yeah. Like, this soundtrack and, like, End of Days was a fantastic soundtrack yeah. for me. Um, Nickelback, and that was the album from Nickelback I actually listened to a lot. I listened to, like, that album and Curb. I won't uh, judge you. Huh? I won't judge you. <laughs> <laughs> um, UPO, I don't remember them. Steak Knife, I remember them. At the Drive-In. Which I can't get into At the Drive-In. I don't know why. I, I like Mars Volta, but I don't. I just can't get into him. I can get into a little bit of At the Drive-In. It's very, very limited. Uh, Queens of the Stone Age, they're fantastic. And Elastica. I love Elastica. I don't remember them at all. I recently uh, bought both of their albums because I was going through YouTube and watching a bunch of Beavis and Butthead watching music videos. Yeah. And one of them was them watching Elastica's, uh, one of their videos. And, uh, and I was like, man, this is actually really good. So I went out and bought two of their albums, and they're really yeah. good. Which they only have two albums. You listen to the Stabbing Western new EP? Oh, yeah, I got it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Cool. I love Stabbing Western. I, it, it doesn't... Christopher Hall has not evolved at all. Not at all. That's exactly <laughs> what I was getting ready to say. I, I was like, man, it really sounds like they just took an old recording and popped it up. Oh, the Crawl like... song was like an early dreaming song. <laughs> like, dude. Yeah. Because I fucking... have... I have the Dreaming... Well, I recently bought the Dreaming's first like little EP. And then they also had like an, an EP called Dreamo's before they put out their full album. And yeah. like, Dreamo has an early version of Crawl on it. And uh, and then they used it for Stepping Westward. And someone like asked Christopher Hall in an interview. They are like, you know, hey, it's... Pre-, or I don't know if it was an interview or just them commenting on Facebook. Because he actually replies to a lot of that stuff. And they were like... So is that a dreaming song or a stepping westward song? And he's like, like I don't think about it like point. that anymore. It's just a song. <laughs> yeah, like, it's a song that I helped write. And that I'm gonna dude play is it when the fuck I so want goofy. To. I saw the dreaming play in some little podunk town in Tennessee somewhere. I yeah. don't know what the fuck. It was a weird show. Like some that just seems like an odd choice of a of a band. It like, was. Cause, did they ever get radio play with dreaming? Uh, I like, think radio was kind of going under when they started doing dreaming. Like, yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying. Like, I I didn't fit. Like, I would figure stabbing westward at this point doesn't have the kind of draw to do like um, what's that auditorium like the out, outdoor auditorium downtown. Yeah, no, they couldn't um, do that. Yeah, like I saw. I've seen stabbing westward now. I saw their big reunion show in Chicago, and they played yeah. Double Door. Which wasn't a big venue. Chicago has a better scene for that, for like industrial. And they do stuff because like that's that where that wax thing. tracks was. Yeah, like. And that, and Stepping Westward has played is, since, and they're fucking Tennessee. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, why I have to go to Chicago for that shit. But uh, that was a cool show. Um, but yeah, like when I saw them, the the show was so weird because I saw them play. Uh, they had like this drag queen i think that was a a star from like 
kind of a, one of those rat race reality shows or whatever. Yeah. And, um, like, he was hosting, or they were hosting. Um, and so I'm sitting there, and, like, there was no one there. There was, like, seven people at this fucking show. Yeah. And I go up to, like, the host and, like, the bass player from The Dreaming, and I'm like, hey, what time do you guys go on? And they looked at me like it was just bizarre that I just went up to them and asked them this question. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I don't... You two are just people to me, man. Like ego kind of shit. I, I've played the more people than that's in this room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but like there was this one really cute girl there, and um, Christopher Hall like like focused on her and started like looking into her eyes and doing like the the fucking vampire like vampire. I'm thing. singing to her and fucking her with my eyes, and then like at some point she went outside for a smoke, and he was like, "Where's the cute girl at?" We're not gonna continue the show until she comes back, and she like sticks her head in the door and is like, "Let's go, I'm busy." And he's like, "No, we're not starting." And I'm like, "Man, come on, you are such a creep." Yeah, like, I got a friend named Cat <laughs> who's seen Stabbing Western in the early days, and he was always trying to fuck her. And like, Christopher Hall has not evolved a bit. He is literally those guys that make music just to get laid. <laughs> that uh... and I love it. <laughs> I love Stabbing Westward. I have all their albums. I think uh, <laughs> I've oh got God, all the dreaming what albums. What is that one I don't have? I, is it the self-titled one? Because that one's that's the one that has like the fucking colorful cover. No, the self-titled one has like a girl on it with like makeup smeared. That yeah, that's the one I don't have. Okay. Uh, the the other one is uh, the one that's got like the person with the umbrella. That's ungod. Then... Well, no, that's wither blister burn and peel. Um, and then the other think... one. No, that's darkest like... days. Fucking, yeah, they only have like four, five albums now. So, uh, and then uh, Ungod was their first one. They have one that I, for some reason, when I'm remembering it, I just remember it as a patchwork quilt. Yeah, that's what the Blister Burning Peel. Okay. That's their second album, and then they did Darkest Days, and then they did their uh, self-titled album, which just had it was a complete departure from their sound. Yeah. And it's what led to the band breaking up, and then the Dreaming happened, and now they've released Dead and Gone, which is the first EP. And they're doing the Nine Inch Nails thing where they're going to put out three EPs this year and then combine them for, like, a big CD release. And I'm going to buy all of them. I don't care enough to... I'm just going to wait for the big thing. I, I, I collect <laughs> CDs. I buy them all. Yeah, I know. I am an idiot. <sighs> all right. Uh, what else can we talk about, I guess? Since this has turned into something very much more <laughs> than just a controller discussion. Uh, we, we almost got personal. And then we started talking Stabbing Westward. Speaking of that. Like, Ministry's going on tour with KMFDM yeah. and Frontline Assembly. Are we Assembly. going to that? God damn, I want to go to that. Like, you the tickets go, are expensive. Like, how much are they? Like, $45. The Fuck! Cheapest. It's fucking, it's a big venue. It is? Yeah. Like, okay, I, 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 can, I can see like if if it was the if it was the one that we went to, I wouldn't like how big. It's not the masquerade. It's it's probably about the size of a. Uh... Like I've I've already looked at it on the map because I was like, when you posted, I was like, oh shit, let's go back to Atlanta. Yeah. And uh... it, just from looking at the seats, it looks like it's about the size of like Bridgestone. If okay. not, if not like the the place where the fucking knights play or whatever. Yeah. But, um, so I, I could see that because it's got KMFDM on it as well. Yeah, which so, ministry is the headliner. Yeah, that's... Um, but KMFDM, I've only seen at the Masquerade. Okay. I don't know, and when I saw Frontline Assembly, it was in, like, a theater. <laughs> it was a really neat venue to see Frontline Assembly, and that was in New York. Yeah. I've seen all three of these bands, and I'm excited to see them again. I haven't seen Frontline Assembly. It's pretty um, cool. My first ministry show was with you, and hey, we got to see Carpenter Brute. That was is... my first ministry show. That was your first ministry mm-hmm. show? Oh. Yeah, wow. that was fucking awesome. And that was their first time in Memphis, which was... And it was like probably everybody's it. last time in Memphis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that venue was shut down. When like, you, that was the last You show. posted the picture where, where <laughs> I saw the news where it was like the venue just a shut down without any warning. And like the yeah. marquee was the same as it was when we went to see ministry. I wonder if it's still the it same. It said the Chemical Brothers on it. And I was like... like yeah. I was like, holy shit, that just happened. <laughs> like, right after we left. Was that the last yeah, show? It was. Damn. Like, I don't know if anybody's bought it. Like, so, 
that was half owned by Live Nation, half by somebody Not else. Live Nation. And I'm like, I would figure at some point, if it was fucking up, Live Nation would just take over completely and tell the other guy to fuck off, because you would figure it's Live Nation. Yeah. They probably got their shit in order a certain degree better than a single individual does. Yeah. And probably have the income to really turn the place out a little bit better. Yeah. Um, I feel like if it was just one of the old gut, one of the uh, old owners of it, or even just an individual owner, they probably wouldn't have had the ministry show. Yeah. Right. I feel like that's solely because of Live Nation, uh, which is one of the very few good things I can say about that company. I know the security <laughs> guards there were like, they did not give a fuck. They didn't care. They were like. Well, this is what I'm supposed to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Because I remember being like, well, can I sit in this little corner here? And they're like, uh, you can sit there for now, but it's supposed to be for, like, special, like, VIP yeah. holder. I was like, fair enough. And, like, they're, and so they were just like, whatever. <laughs> I was on a shit ton of acid at that show. <laughs> yeah, I kind of, I kind of put my life in God's hands for a minute. Because <laughs> I'm the one who drove back to, uh, I'm the one who drove home that night and was, like no, I just three went hours. To, I, I just went to sleep in the back seat. I was like, "Fuck it! If it's my time to go, it's my time to go." <laughs> but we made it. And uh, I, 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 st- I still hold that Carpenter Brute show as one of the. One I of loved my... it. Carpenter Brute was badass, and I yeah. keep forgetting their name. I'm glad you said it. They, uh... oh man, they uh... Carpenter Brute has a remix that's part of League of Legends now. Like. They remixed a le- uh, track that has something to do with League of Legends, so that's like a big thing now. Someone's coming to town soon with Scold, and I can't remember if it's Three Teeth or somebody else. It's Three, yeah. It's Is three it Three Teeth? teeth? It's Three Teeth. I want to go to that show, so. Um, yeah, my friend John's coming down from Kentucky. I love He's Scold gonna... and Three Teeth. And like, Three Teeth yeah. has three songs on the uh, Gun Akimbo soundtrack, apparently. That's, okay, that's what he was talking about then. Two so, cover songs. La- um, last time that Three Teeth was in Nashville, we were hanging out after the show. And I I was hanging out talking to um, author Punisher dude, who's fucking great. Yeah, he is. I've seen him um, twice. I sat there. We we had like an hour long conversation about his machines, mm-hmm. right? So that was that was cool. With yeah. Me. Um, but while I was there, like next to me, my friend John and Lebo was there, and they were just uh, kind of hound dogging the singer for Three Teeth for a little bit, just you know being fans. And, and his mustache. Yes. <laughs> he's, he's tall, man. Is he? Yeah, he's pretty I've tall. never seen them in person, Mike. He's, he's pretty, it, it's a good show, man. They, they have these, um, so they don't use standard lights and strobes that come down. Yeah. They have these sticks that stick up, and they just have them randomly throughout the, throughout the uh, stage. Mm-hmm. And they're just like stick lights that poke up, and that's their whole lighting rig. Yeah. Um, but it, it's amazingly effective. Yeah. Um, I know they played Cold Waves once, but it was long before I started going to Cold Waves. Yeah. Um, and then they got on tour with Tool, which was a big deal for industrial guys. They were like, yeah. hell yeah, three teeths on tour with a major band like Tool. Like, all right. Yeah, I didn't like that new Tool album. Um, it was okay. Like, every, everyone else is either okay with it or like it. I just, it, it sounds like Tool's just, re- to me it sounded like Tool rehashing Everything they thought was their greatest hits. Yeah. Um, that's what it sound. That's kind of what it sounded like to me. And if that's where it's going, then I don't give a shit to listen to Tool. Which what was funny was uh, Andrew, like, he listened to it on uh, Spotify. Yeah. And was like, and I, I, he said I enjoyed a lot of it, but I hated the instrumental songs. They were just boring. And I was like, yeah. the CD does not have the instrumental songs on it. Like when you buy the CD, because and. <laughs> I think it's because they don't have enough time to put all that shit on it. No, yeah. Like the CD just can't physically hold that long of a fucking thing. And uh, so, like, it gives you a download, and that has the instrumental tracks on it. But, like, that's... I mean, I thought it was okay. I did make a lot of fun of it, especially, like, when everyone was doing their end-of-the-year Spotify thing. Yeah. And this one girl was like... I don't even like Tool that much, but it says Tool's like my most listened to band. And I said, well, when your album's five hours long. Yeah, that's not hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you press play on a Tool, like... Fear not. That, that was very future for them. Yeah, long ass album. <laughs> um, oh, God, we were talking about industrial. Uh, where else were we going with that? 
I know the Lords of Acid's on tour, or they're going to be on tour, and some friends of mine want me to go with them to North Carolina to see Lords of Acid and Private Con and, and some bands that I don't really know, but I might get to know. That, that was Old a Wave show. 9 is coming up. I'm excited about that. That was a fun show in Atlanta. That was, Lords. Thank you for taking me there. You're welcome. It was Lords and, uh, who else played that show? I know Jillian knew one of the bands. Uh, I don't know. I remember, like... It was shout weird. out to Jillian, by the way. And some yeah. dickhead was making fun of her weight online, and he was, because she said she wanted to beat up somebody, and he goes, don't sit on them. And it's like, fucking, don't be a dick. Yeah, that's kind of a shitty thing to do. Um, I was on a shit ton of acid at that show as well. You're on a shit ton of acid more often than not. Yeah, I know. It's fun. It, it is, is fun. It is a fun thing to do. Um, uh, that I if I ever go see Tool, I want to do acid. I want to get yeah. a seat, and I want to do acid. That's my thing with Tool. Tool, I'm willing to do that with, and I'm, I don't know. I'm pecu- I'm particular about stuff like that, but but I also don't want to spend the money you have to spend to go see Tool. So yeah, no, I, <laughs> no, I, no, God no. Have you have you ever looked at ticket prices for that shit? Yeah, because they all get bought up by those fucking resellers oh, yeah. first thing. Um, where was I going? And that's what happened to the album, actually. Is everyone? Oh yeah, all the resellers bought all the collector's edition versions and all that shit. Um, what was I gonna fucking say? Fuck. Oh yeah. Um, you did acid your first time. Yeah. Because of me. Is that? Are you okay talking about that? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's uh, let's talk about that because. And- if it, you're seeing me on the camera, my mom's trying to contact me, so I'm telling her that I'm I'm doing a thing. You're good. Go ahead. Uh, so yeah, uh, what what did you think it was before you did it? Like, com- there's there's so much stuff about it in the way it's portrayed, and I just, thought that I was going to hallucinate more. Yeah, like, and that's really all. I had no real precognition. I know, like, like my mother. Uh, who kind of grew up during the hippie times, and she told me that, like, I asked her once, you know, what did you see? And she goes, oh, I don't want to talk about it. It's just too frightening. And after we did it, I I realized that most of the people who warned me about acid have probably never done it. Yeah. And, um, or she's, I mean, who knows what the fuck Maybe she, she did just, done. like, a massive shit ton of it mixed she, with something else? Yeah, she might have mixed <laughs> it with other stuff, because I know she was into some heavy shit back then. Yeah. And, um, but, like, yeah, like the only time I hallucinated, and I knew it wasn't a thing like I thought it was real. I knew what was going on. I looked at you, and the sun was shining on your head and made your <laughs> your head look like an insect for a yeah. second. And I'm just like, ha, you look like an insect. Like, I, I knew I wasn't sitting next to an insect. I didn't think, you know, oh, Patrick turned into a fucking bug. Like, I just thought it was funny. Yeah, <laughs> like, and that's the thing, like, the, the most... You, The way society and media portrays this is way off from what it actually is. So you've done it a couple of times at this point. It's it very much just the most you get out of it as far as visuals is if like you're looking at an in-depth pattern just wiggles a little bit. I did because when we retired to my office, um, which is where things got. Not weird in a scary way, but like we turned on. I was some talking music. about a Serbian film. He was talking about a Serbian <laughs> film. I turned on some music and I put on the visualizer, and I could see figures dancing in the visualizer. Yeah. And so I wanted to listen to music and watch people dance. And Patrick's over there talking about the Serbian film, and I just wanted to be like, I wanted to turn around and be like, dude, shut the fuck up! I'm trying to watch these people. Which dance. you should have done. But I didn't want to be impolite because he's a guest yeah. in my house. He brought the drugs. And, like, <laughs> Jay is sitting there, and he's having a rough time, so he's getting high. He was smoking pot, and, uh, but I'm just sitting there, like, like, in my head, I'm like, ah, damn, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you could have said it. it. It was your first trip, so it was, like, it, it was kind of all on you at that point. Like, anything you wanted to do, that that's what we're doing. At the time, I wanted to kick you out of my house and just stare at the visualizer. But I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> Yeah. Acid or no acid, I'm still a southerner. <laughs> yeah, that is a southern hospitality thing. Yeah. I, I, I still don't think that is something that is real. I feel like that's something that has just been forced upon people 
like the whole idea of southern hospitality has been forced upon us and we just think we have to adhere to that and that's why we're nice to people i mean it, i don't know i know that uh like we've classified various rednecks in my life and it's like there's there's the shitty rednecks but then there's also the good old boys and the good old boys don't care and yeah. And they, they welcome anybody over, and they'll fix you some breakfast, and, like, fucking good old boys. And and I can dig that. And, I mean, of course, I'm from Georgia, so, like, that's... And, and I'm white, so, like, I have a different yeah background with, with rednecks. And, uh, you know, that I, I fully accept it. I have fucking... I, I've got rednecks all through my family. So, adopt, or adopted or biological. Yeah. So, it's, uh... Yeah. I I don't even go out to East Tennessee just because chances are if I'm going through the hills or something I'll run into family. Yeah, I don't fucking give a shit to see. I know my, my <laughs> I always found it funny like like I there's a little neighbor boy that I mean, he's black and I was friends with him and my mom was like I'm just so proud of you that you're friends with him. And I'm like okay I mean we're just we're friends we're friends I don't understand what the big deal is yeah. but all right and race is still a very very it was a tense thing and so i mean it wasn't a tense, tense thing because my mother my mother is episcopalian so she yeah. kind of grew up very open-minded about stuff and my father is more of he's he's what i like to call the subtle racist where right. he's not like out you know like you know fn words and stuff like that but but he's got a little bit of racism and i'm like yeah, he told my well my, i should have known they were black yeah like he told my sister that she shouldn't date black guys because they would like because they beat up their women or something, and like I mean, well, the last time I saw a guy beat up his watch, beat up his girlfriend, it was my mom's white boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so I mean, there's just shitty people out there. Because I told my like I I was dating a black girl for a little bit, and I asked my sister if I said, "Do you think my dad would have a problem with that?" And she goes, "I don't think he would care that you're dating a black person, but he wouldn't let me date one." <laughs> like, oh, it's all. <laughs> dad would be like, oh, it's all pink on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> My dad was so goofy that first time I heard the word masturbation, I asked him what it meant, and he's like, I'm not telling you that. <laughs> A friend at school had to tell me what it was using Beavis and Butthead as an example. Oh, masturbating <laughs> is like when you're choking your chicken. Oh, I get it. <laughs> That's how oh, I learned God. about the word masturbating. And I've practiced it ever since. <laughs> if the if the situation ever presents itself to where um, your sister can tell your dad that you're dating a black chick, you should uh, you should have her say, "Yeah, I'm I'm also dating a black guy now." And then when he freaks out, just have her say, "Well, it's all pink on the inside." That's right. And then have him confused, and then just have <laughs> like be like, "We love strap-ons." Hell yeah. <laughs> like... And I, I discovered... <laughs> she's going to kill me if she finds out I'm talking about this stuff. I discovered on Instagram that my sister has like a kink page. And it recommended it to me. And it's like, you should follow this girl right here. And I look at it and I'm like, nope, that's my sister. I am not following that. I'm not going to judge her. You do you. Like, yeah. I'm not I'm not naive. Like, that, that's just weird to look at for, at, at your sister in that way. Yeah, I'm like, that's so. your personal life. And we've talked about that since. Yeah. And, like, she introduced me to her fiancé who, like, he kept saying stuff like, you know, I like to pound her every day. And I'm like, all right, dude, just slow down. Yeah, I, I, that's I'm cool. my sister. I'm, I'm, a, I'm the cool brother. I'm not foolish. I'm not going to be like, you have sex with my sister, I'll kick your ass. Like, I'm not dumb. Oh, yeah, I have sex with my sister. Yeah, and, like, so, uh, but I'm like, but that doesn't mean you have to sit there and throw it out there like that. Yeah, I don't like, that's kind of, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to think about your parents or your siblings yeah. fucking, like, uh, like, I'm, my sister isn't even biologically my sister, but it's still fucking weird. You know, like, she took care of me growing up, for yeah. the most part, more than anybody else did, so it's like. She, like, my, the closest thing I had to a mother figure was my sister, and it's like, the, which is weird in, is, in and of itself, um, not as weird as someone being, like, like, talking about fucking my sister, though. That's why, like, it's like. That's why whenever people get pregnant, they don't start off the conversation talking about how they got pregnant. Yeah. They're just like, hey, I'm pregnant. Because when's the last time you went up to, like, when's the last time anyone went up to their mom and said, okay, so, you know how I've been hanging out with Jennifer, right? Well, we were fucking the other day, and I, I forgot <laughs> and to pull right. out, and now she's pregnant. It's like, you could leave out all those details. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if you... 
<laughs> that should be that should be a fake conversation you should have with your mom or your dad and record it. I always when my per, when my when Scab had his first son, I always wanted to take her, take his son to my mom and be like, "Say hi to grandma." <laughs> Cuz my mom had this paranoid fear of aging. <laughs> I think everyone has a little bit of a fear of yeah, aging. Yeah, I remember I, Just like, one of my favorite things, my grandmother, who's since passed away, but like when my mom turned 50, my grandmother, she was like freaking out. She got a letter from the AARP or whatever the fuck they're called, and yeah. and like she was like, oh my God, I'm getting old, blah, blah, blah. And my grandmother goes... I get letters from the AARP, I'm 33. Right. My grandmother was like, she needs to chill out, because either you die or you have a birthday. Yeah. <laughs> like, um... Fuck, what was I going to say there? Fuck. Um, shit, 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 shit. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're starting my grandma's. So I just found my grandma is a fucking cunt. Okay. Like, I've done so much illegal shit for my grandma. Uh-huh. Like, when me and my ex lived there. Um, <laughs> like, and it, was, it wasn't like she needed something and then I had no other way to get it besides doing something illegal. Yeah. She was like, well, if you want to continue staying here, and I was like, we pay the fucking bills. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you going to do? Like, she's fucking loaded, so figured that out eventually, so she's well taken care of. Um, But she would just randomly, like, she'd go over to her friend's house and she would see something she wants and she'd be like, well, you need to go over there for some reason and you need to take that to move. Wow. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, why? She's like, well, if you want to continue staying here, and it's like, our house was still being built. It's like, damn. What the fuck, man? Like, damn, Grandma, you're kind of fucking ruthless. Yeah. Via me. <laughs> like, um, so I broke into three people's houses and stole just tons of shit out of people's yard. Or, um, yeah. Not all grandmas are created equal. No. But, uh, this is how shitty my family is. So, I moved out. I've stopped talking to that whole side of my family because they're all fucked up. Uh, so my dad died. Uh, da, 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 da. when was it? He's it was not recently, my bi- wasn't it? He's not my biological dad, but, um. So I remember you telling me about attending the funeral. Yes. Alright, there we go. And, uh,. Look at my shorts. So, Grandma has been put into a home. Grandma got ran over in a home. And Mom and Aunt Judy, or my mom's name is Judy, Aunt Jill, <laughs> um, Judy and Jill. If you ever hear this, you're both cunts, and you both deserve to die. There you go, cunts. <laughs> uh, so they've basically fucked off all her fi- all of Grandma's finances at this point so I'm just like last time I knew it grandma had like 800,000 in the bank Mm -hmm. like if I had that I wouldn't have to work for at least a decade yeah more than that but yeah like and they fucked it off in a matter of of like less than half of that damn yeah (laughs) like oh god that's fucking amazing to me. So, uh, yeah. And I remember, uh, my mom had found, like, I got the brunt of all the shit that my mom used to do. Uh, so my mom had found an envelope that my grandma had lost and it had like $800 cash and then like two grand in checks. Uh, so my grandma made a lot of money doing whatever the fuck. Um, selling whatever the fuck that she could. And uh, she would, like, go to flea markets and set up. And she would, some weekends, she would do, you know, $20,000. Mm-hmm. And so my mom found that envelope, which Grandma was looking for. She never found, Grandma never got it. Mom found it, though, and Grandma never got it. So. Yeah. Uh, but Grandma blamed me for it. Right? So I'm like... Yeah, you can only take so much of that shit before you leave. Yeah, fuck that. So, um, 
I mean, I've done plenty of grindy shit in my life, but it's it wasn't something to where I was like, I was living next door to my grandma at the time, and uh, I was like, dude, I only come over here when you ask me to come over here. Yeah. <laughs> like, you watch me the whole time I'm over here, like, there's nothing that I can possibly do. Uh, so it's it, it, it feels good to know that she's being treated like shit <laughs> in a home. Sitting there calling up like, like you no, know, I saw Happy Gilmore. Is she being treated by somebody like like Ben Stiller on that? Oh yeah, she is. All right, good. I just want to make sure. That. Right, <laughs> yeah. Or it's like, no, we don't do anything like that. Well, could you find someone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you trouble me for a nice warm glass of shut the hell up. I love yeah. that shit. I like, I especially love the fact that like <laughs> the televised version of Happy Gilmore has an ending to that. Where Happy throws him out a window. But that's not on the DVD version. Or Is it not? Not that I remember. I've only seen it on the televised version. Like, on the DVD version, they just leave. But on the televised version, he goes up to him and says, I know what you've been doing and I don't like it. And he throws him out a window. I remember that, but that, I don't know if I remember... I don't know if I remember a distinction between and, them. And I and I remember sitting there seeing that on the televised version and being like, why wouldn't that be on every version? That's what everyone wanted to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Of all the things you could cut out of Happy Gilmore, that like that—that's one of the things you wouldn't. Yeah. Hey, that feels like a Snyder removal. Yeah. Like, have you noticed that anything that like, is it like, Zack Snyder makes, Zack is that his name? Yeah. Makes the movies. Uh... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fucking know. Dude. I can never remember. Um, is it Scott so like, Snyder is the, is the writer? I think Zack uh, Snyder think, is the yeah. movie maker, yeah. Yeah, so like... Anytime I try to think of both of them... He can make them. some good movies. Like, yeah. the... Barring the Martha thing, Batman versus Superman, the extended cut, like, is fine. Barring the Martha thing, that, that was dumb. Um, and I'll continue saying that forever. <laughs> until I die. Martha. But, uh, same thing happened, like, when I saw The Watchmen in theaters, the movie just didn't make a lot of sense to me. But then I saw the extended director's cut, and I was like, oh, okay, cool, it makes sense, the movie fucking works now, it's fine. Um, and that's kind of the same thing with every Zack Snyder movie that I've seen. <laughs> like, it, it's kind of like... I, f I think I figured out what happened. What happens with his movies? He may he's fantastic if you give him a three hour blank slate to fuck with. Yeah. But then you come in and say, all right, we got to cut it down to two hours, and he did like it. Seriously, sounds like he just takes a finished version of the film, starts highlighting random shit and deleting it. Yeah. <laughs> like. I feel that way about uh, the Ghostbusters movie, the, the the third one with the girls. Yeah. Um. Because I loved that movie. I know a lot of people didn't like it. I loved it. And I saw the director's cut first. Yeah. And thought it was great. And then I watched the theatrical version. And it was missing so much good stuff that I was like, okay, this must be what people hate. Because, like, there's a whole sequence at the beginning of it where... Uh, the, girl, the the main character is like she's talking to all the she's trying to talk to all these people at this fucking college and like she's telling them yeah I get to do a, le a lesson in the big room and everyone's kind of treating her like shit and it just builds her character and then yeah. when I watched the theatrical version they cut all that shit off and started with her in the big room and I'm like that just took everything away from her and and there I mean there's some jokes that they cut out that I fucking love there was a lot of shit that I had a problem with with the female one so I feel like... That sounds like a whole other podcast. <laughs> it, it is. It is. Because we're damn near at two hours. Yeah. So, um... I, I don't know what to fucking title this when I put it up. So... Look at my shorts! That's what we'll, that's what, that's what we'll title it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Alright, uh... We'll have to do this again. Because this was definitely okay. Um... I think this is probably the most talking that I've done in a podcast ever. I tend to so rant my podcasts, which are yeah. Nerd Cult Underground. You can find it at LeoLegacy.com. All Satan, no wiener, baby. <laughs>
<laughs> Dude, did I tell you I got uh, <laughs> my friend's kid to say that? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, he said the uh, he said the reverse of that. I'm sorry. Oh, all we know about Satan. Yeah. Um, so he's gay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's not it's not a secret at all by any stretch of the imagination. Um, you ever meet a gay person and you can just tell they're gay? Mm-hmm. Like, I've I've known this kid since he was eight. Like at eight years old, his first sense I was like, yeah, he's gonna like cock when he gets older, right? Like, that's cool. Yeah, fair, fair that's enough. his thing. Um, his parents have, have were vehemently against that. Uh, is that a fucking word? Yeah. Okay. Vehemence is uh, Latin for violent. So they're violently against it. They were. Yes, they were, actually. I know so that because I used to call myself uh, Imperator Micratus Pennsylvanicus. Or vehemence. Fuck, it was a big, long thing of just a bunch of random yeah. Latin words that I put together that basically meant king filled mouse the prostitute king or something like that or emperor <laughs> filled mouse the prostitute king scortus. the prostitute king yeah famous scortus oh, prostitute shit. king um or famous scortus rex is the violent prostitute king that's where i got that so we anyway. were <laughs> anyway, so you're we friend. were listening to uh we were listening to nerd cult underground at the time i think it may have actually been um skeleton crew or Comic Crypt. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Where it all changed names. And uh, he said the... Uh, y'all, had, y'all had been saying All Satan, No Wiener for a couple of episodes. <laughs> and then uh, there was one episode where either you or Jay switched it up for, like, at one point, And he laughed his ass off at it because <laughs> he was in the room listening to it with me. And uh, I was like, dude, next time your dad starts, like, uh, getting on to you about being gay, just, just yell out, like, as mean as you can. Just yell out, I'm all wiener, no Satan, All bitch. wiener, no Satan. <laughs> and then walk out of the room. We wanted to make t-shirts. I don't know why Jay never did. We were going to make one that said all Satan, no wiener, and one that said all wiener, no Satan. One that said too fat for cocaine. <laughs> Yeah, if he, if he would get fat people sizes in that shirt. Yeah. Um, I can hook him up with a distributor for blank shirts, but he doesn't. He uh, he lets other people print his shit. He does that now, yeah. He used to yeah. have a, a fucking printing press in this house, but I don't know what he did with it. Yeah, he needs to start doing that again. I, I just feel like that's... You have more control that way. Yeah. Right? Like, I just... He just... I don't know if he has the time to fuck with it now, because he runs, like, media for a tattoo parlor in Florida, and he does... Yeah. Dealing with his kid all the time, and then he also works for uh, Lyft in the offices and stuff like it. Yeah. Oh, he works in the office. I'm, I have a few people that work out there. That's well, now he works from home, but he did used to work in the office. Yeah. That's what's up. Hell yeah. You know what? I would I would love to do that. Like, I'm cool with my new job. I love my hours. Do they have overnight? Do you know? I don't know. Fuck. You I thought about I, I looked into it because I had some problems with my job, but... Those problems have since been subsided, subsided, and so we'll see. Cool. Yeah. Um, what were we just talking about? We were trying to shut down. The oh markets. yeah. We're closing. <laughs> yeah, we're closing, closing out shop. again. <laughs> um, it's another false ending. So, Field Mouse, thank you for coming out. And thank you for having me. It was playing fun. Sega with me, and yeah, listening to John or Mister J be loud as shit. Find me on Instagram, off brand FM. I'll drop the uh, link in the description if you want to check out. I got a lot of links. Field <laughs> He's got a lot of them. Uh, got a lot of links. I make music. I'm a professional nerd. I do podcasts. That's true. You are a professional nerd. I feel like there's a there's very few uh, uh, careers. That's the word I'm looking for. Careers yeah. in life that you can apply that to, but you definitely have that. You have that going on. Uh, I wish I did. It has its moments. I kind of hate my job. <laughs> and it's not this. And this is a two hour long podcast, um, which we'll figure out a name for. He told me a minute ago, but I, I forgot. Look at my shorts. Name. Look at my shorts. Two hours of look at my Jay. shorts. It's a tribute to Jay Leal. The Reverend Justin Leal. Reverend Jay.
the letter uh, J. It's really funny because he like when he touches kids, it's on their same level because he's that short. He's such a sellout, man. That that was the funniest thing when I was on acid and he came over and I suddenly <laughs> got hyperactive and stood up and started talking and I said, "Holy shit, you're short." <laughs> <laughs> You don't remember that? Yeah, I don't remember that. I remember spending like 20 minutes trying to convince him he needed to do acid. And I still think he does. Yeah, 